Hello everyone, welcome back to another video lesson. Okay, and in this lesson we are going to continue uh, learning about circles, uh, but now this will would in, will include secants and tangents, uh, secant lines and tangent lines, and the angles that are formed uh, by these two intersecting, okay? So I'm going to ask you to pause the video, uh, copy uh, this for now, and then press play to continue. Okay, so let's start with uh, with uh, two chords. Okay, so I'm going to use a ruler here, and I'm going to draw two chords. And a chord is just a segment, okay, uh, with two endpoints on the circle. Okay, so it's it doesn't have to be a diameter, but a diameter is a chord. Uh, the only difference between a chord and a diameter is the diameter passes through the center point. Uh, of the circle. So this one is a chord and then I'm going to draw another chord here. Alright, so this is another chord and then uh, I'm going to label uh, the points. Okay, I'm going to label the points on the circle okay so I can name those points. And let's call this point point A uh, this one, let's call this point B, uh, point C, and point D. Okay, so these are two chords intersecting inside of a circle. Uh, but what happens if I extend this to form a line? Okay, so this will be a line. I'm just doing the arrows. That means it's a line that's going to continue going forever in both uh, extremes. So this is another line. So once I do that, these, okay, the red ones are chords. They have the endpoints on the circle, but the green ones are secant lines, okay? Uh, and maybe I should add secant or secant line for now. Okay, so this will be a secant and this is a secant. And the uh, uh, I hope you guys remember this. Chords are segments and the secants are lines. Okay, but when they intersect inside of a circle, they form special angles at this intersection. Okay, so I'm going to call this angle, uh, this angle here, I'm going to call it angle one for now. So this is angle one. Now, what we need to know about this, okay, and once you get this, uh, uh, understand this formula, then you can just apply it. So if I'm interested in finding the measure of angle one, okay, what I need to do is I need to use this formula. So this will be one half, and then it's going to be the measure of the intersect intersected arcs, okay? So the measure of the intercepted arcs. So in this case, AB is being intersected by these two secants or chords. So the measure of arc AB, and don't forget to know that this is an arc, this is what it means, okay? That's what we use to make it, to let people know that, that it's an arc. So we uh, we add the measure of the two arcs, and then the other intercepted arc is C, CD. Okay? And then we take half the sum. So this will be the formula when you have either two chords or two secant lines intersecting inside of a circle. So we're going to use that in a moment. The next one... I'm going to uh, draw again. I'm going to draw another line here, but I'm going to use a line that you haven't seen before. So this will be uh, your introduction to secant and tangent lines. So this line is here. Okay, and it's going to intersect the circle at one point. And then I'm going to have a secant line. Okay, so let's say this is a secant. And uh, let's call this vertex angle. This will be angle A. And this point here is going to be point B. And this point, let's call this point C. And this point is going to be point D. Okay, now notice the difference. A tangent line only touches the circle at exactly one point, okay? 
a secant line that's going to touch the circle at two points. So that's how you can tell the difference. So if you want to make a definition of this, tangent line uh, intercepts in a circle at exactly one point, secant two points. All right. So when this happens, notice that the intersection is taking place outside of the circle, not inside of the circle, like when you have two, uh, two chords or two secants intersecting, okay? So they intersect outside, and when they intersect outside, they form this angle. So let's call it, well, let's, name, let's leave that angle as angle A. So in this case, if I want to find the measure of angle A, okay, so the measure of angle A is going to be equal to 1 half, now it's not going to be the sum, it's going to be the difference. One half the measure of this big arc. Okay, so arc uh, CD minus the other intersected arc, or the measure of the other intersected arc, which is BC. And that's the formula we use for uh, a secant and a tangent. Okay, notice uh, this is arc CD, and this is arc BC, and this is arc CD here, and arc AB. I don't know if I mentioned that, but in case I didn't, uh, that's what this means, okay? So having said that, now that you have the formulas, okay, all you need to be able to do is, okay, look at the circles, and then determine if you have either two chords or secants, or if you have a secant and a tangent, okay? All right, so let's continue this uh, with this lesson. So here you have two examples, and I'm gonna try to show uh, the formulas for now. So first of all, I'm looking at this example here, and I see that the two segments, okay, and these are segments, so that means they're chords, uh, they intersect inside the circle. So that means I have two chords, or secants, okay, I know these are not secants, but don't forget they go together. It could be two chords or two secants. If you have either either, uh, either of these two, then that means we are going to look at the first formula I gave you. So we have two chords because the circles are intersecting inside, and we're being asked to find angle one. So to find the measure of angle one, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to state the formula. So the measure of angle one is going to be equal to one half the sum of the intercepted arcs. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be 105 degrees. Uh, well, I don't have to do degrees, but let's leave that for now. Okay, plus 219 degrees. So when we add 105 and, one, and 219, that sums up to 300 and 24 okay and half of uh, 324 that is equal to 162 degrees and I'm sorry you couldn't see that okay so that's what I did this is the formula I mean this is what the formula says so add the two arcs and then take half of the sum and that half is half of uh, 324 is 162 so this angle has a measure of 162 degrees all right, so as you can see, it's simple enough uh, to apply the formula if you understand what you have. So in this case, two chords or secants, so we use uh, the first formula. Now let's go on to the second example. Okay, on the second example, we have uh, this ray, if you will, this ray uh, touches the circle at exactly one point. Okay, and this one here touches the circle at two points. So we have a tangent, because it's only one point, and a secant, because it's two points. So now we're looking at something similar to this. Okay, so that means we apply this formula to that problem. But notice uh, that we do not have this arc, okay, which is the formula says. The formula says you have to use the two intercepted arcs. But we don't have this one. But as you know, if we rotate around a circle 360 degrees, uh, I mean, if we rotate around a circle, it's going to be 360 degrees. So if we add this arc and this arc, so let's say we do 190 uh, plus 40, that's going to sum up to 230 degrees. 
but we know our full rotation is 360, so then we take 360 and we subtract 230, and then this uh, difference is going to be 130 degrees, which means this arc has a measure of 130 degrees. So now we have the two intercepted arcs. So then the formula says if I want to find the measure of angle 1, that's going to be equal to one half the difference of the big arc, which is 190, okay, uh, minus uh, the other intercepted arc, so 130, and that is going to be equal to one half. This is uh, 60 degrees, so the measure of angle 1, okay, is going to be equal to half of 60, which is 30 degrees, and there you have it. All right, I hope that was simple enough. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next uh, lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.